And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode number 53 of the uh, Departure Lounge uh, podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel. Not just that this evening, camera's wonky, always good. Uh, we're live also on Visions Aviation uh, on YouTube, and we're also live on Visions Aviation on Facebook. So happy happy Wednesday, everybody. I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Whittle. I am the host for this evening, and joining me, as always, uh, is the wonderful co-host, uh, Steve Waldridge. Steve, very good evening to you. I have noticed that my background is different. I'm going to ch quickly change that over. There we go. Uh, Steve, how are you this evening? Yeah. Hello, everyone uh, watching at home and on um, on Vision uh, Facebook page. And it's a pleasure to uh, have you with us. Hope you're doing well, Tom. And yeah, looking forward to another decent night. Should be good. Yeah, doing all right. Yeah, doing all right. Not too bad. It's a little bit different this evening and it's, it's good fun to you know, uh, broaden our, our horizons. So we uh, we thank um, Visions Aviation for that. Um, yeah, decent week so far. Yeah, I uh, when I did with that Friday night, that's the kind of circles I move in these days. He was delighted to meet me. It'd been an ambition of his for a, for quite some time. <laughs> some sort of three forty leave born because that's the kind of stuff we get up to. And yeah, I've had to work a full week this week on. Devastated. I'm not quite used to it, to be honest. What about no. yourself? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. You know the situation and stuff. I'm not going to get into it. So, um, but yeah, it's been it's been interesting so far. Very interesting. I've got. I've not put my yeah, glasses no, on. So... Yeah, there you go. That's better. I can actually. <laughs> yeah, that will help you. Just... I can you get to see how good looking I am in real life now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'll take them off again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> We'll bring you back in shortly, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah welcome nice to the show. Uh, also joining us this evening um, is our resident comment reader oh, slash contributor oh, to the show, whose TV I can still hear in the background. No, uh, turn it down, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching Rick Stein, sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, it's Ian Hartley. Down. Ian, good evening to you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah, all good up here. How are you? Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad at all um yeah not not too bad uh all considering yeah, but yeah not yeah. not too bad at all uh how's your week been so far yeah it's been all right um been fishing a couple of times this week i've, I've actually blanked twice this week which isn't very good but i'm going again tomorrow um and that's what i've been up to really this week uh, just a bit of fishing there's nothing else really going on up here at the moment so no that's um that's mm. that's fair enough Fair enough. I do think, though, I'm going to... Is it this Saturday? We were talking to Alison the other week. Is it this Saturday, a, a flight out of Manchester in the 3.30? I'm sure with this... Oh, is it? All right, I've got another week yet, then. I'm gonna say, I, 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 yeah, I was planning on going down to Manchester to um, watch your um, fly out, but it's going to be the next week now. So, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So I'll leave that till next week. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll bring you back <clears throat> very shortly. Uh, and of course, joining us this evening is our guest of honour. Um, he is the reason that uh, Visions Aviation is here. It is, of course, the one and only Ken Carr. Ken, a very good evening to you with pint in hand. Uh, how are you this evening? Very good. Thank you for having us on. No problem. No, thank you for um, thank you for coming on to the show. Um, we've sort of um, you know, we've been liaising pretty much for you know, the last sort of week or so, and we're finally here. We're finally doing it. So, um, yeah. Firstly, for at least for me, uh, thank you for allowing us to um, uh, 
<laughs> lost my train of thought then. Thank you for allowing us to uh, uh, stream onto your channels. No, pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Wonderful. Let's bring everybody back. Here, let's just, everyone's in the right order, so that's fine. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. Now, Ian, you're going to be on comment duty this evening as well. Yeah, um, no problem. More. God help you, because there's a lot to get through already. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so if you'd like to go through some <laughs> of the guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah. If you want to go through some of the hellos and stuff, um, and uh, we'll, and then we'll wrap into the Yeah, of course we will, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll start off with uh, right at the bottom of the list here. We've got Samuel Taylor Acro who's joined us tonight. So good evening to you, um, Sam. Um, mm-hmm. Let's have a look else we've got here. Darren Graham is saying hi. So a pass on Facebook, of course. Guys. Yeah, of, of course. These comments are coming through Facebook, aren't they? Yeah, just not they are them. indeed. Yeah, YouTube uh, and Facebook. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Donna O'Brien, hi, Darren. <laughs> um jim jim gemmel um lol at v- visions international yeah he's trying to wind up sarah oh is that what <laughs> it is right okay all right, he, all right. he's watching on youtube and he should yeah. be watching on facebook <laughs> <laughs> just read the hellos you'll be fine <laughs> yeah of course all, yeah donna o'brien saying hi to sarah um donna o'brien again he's saying hi to harmick um yeah, Jim Gemmell saying, oh, you're hiding on Facebook, are you, Sarah? <laughs> uh, Sarah Passy saying hi to Harmick. Rob Brown is saying good good evening to everyone. I've just lost where I was up to then. It's just flicked up something. <laughs> right, okay. No, we're all good. Uh, Samuel Taylor, I cry it again. Hi, Rob. Um, Loops, uh, Loopy and Waddies are saying hello to each other. T and Hartley saying hi. Okay, girly pops, and it goes on and goes on. So I think I'll back over to you now, Tom. Actually, and I, yeah, I was gonna say, otherwise, we're going literally through <laughs> yeah, the we're entire gonna, list. We're yeah. doing 90 minutes at this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't need to go through everybody. We'll just I'll show a few more comments myself. Um, we got obviously your daughter Ian saying hi, girly pops. Yep, <laughs> um, end of Burke on Facebook. Uh, saying that Ken is a oh, legend. Ender. Yeah. End, Ender is a legend. <laughs> oh my God. Brilliant. Talk. He called you a legend. Uh, Ender's a legend. Never <laughs> Ender. Uh, Donna O'Brien saying, hello, Ken, a pint instead of a glass of red. Yeah, I've been good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, just lots of hellos there. Keep getting your comments in. We'll bring them onto uh, the show throughout uh, throughout the evening. Uh, as well um and of course last one for now is Wadders on youtube saying evening all yep, how we doing wonderful evening. Good evening. right let's let's jump into this evening um and uh before we do we're gonna do, do some housekeeping before we do that so uh we are on social media as you know uh we are on youtube we're on instagram we're on twitter we're on facebook and we're on twitch as well you can find the links to those in the description below on youtube um and give us a subscribe if you are new to uh the the place uh it sort of helps us out massively and uh you know we are um yeah we're, we're massively appreciative for having ken here this evening so mm-hmm. um yeah do do follow us and of course if you haven't followed uh visions international or aviation do uh follow them as well uh also we have a merch shop as you can see we and i think ian are you yeah i've got it? a t-shirt on yep yep hang on yeah go on quick flash for you there, there you go <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, so we've all got um, we've all got uh, merch. Uh, you can find the shop in the description below if you want to support the channel as well through that. Uh, and then lastly, if you wish to be a guest on the show, just like uh, Ken is this evening, uh, drop us a message on the social medias and we'll get you on as soon as we can. So uh, let's crack into this evening's show. So Ken is here from Visions Aviation to talk about um the platform itself and of course everything that you've got going on in the background and uh, quite literally in the background as we can see uh on on your camera um so first of all ken uh how did uh visions uh, aviation visions international uh sort of come about wow um well visions international has been going pretty much since 1991 um initially we were um doing railway stuff and we um, we used to sell, this is back in the day, we used to sell other people's videos of trains. Anyway, fast forward to 2005, we actually decided we'd better start doing our own um, own product, basically. So we, and it was, we, we did our, um, a railway video slash DVD, because it was right on the cusp of when uh, DVDs were coming along. So 
I did that. Uh, as we went through doing that, we've done over 120 documentaries on DVD. Um, we got interest. Well, I didn't get interested, but I got persuaded to do London buses. So we've done that. Um, all the way along, we've kind of tried books and did all that. Um, and then it was 20, 2019. I thought it was time for us to move into aviation because I've always been interested in aircraft and stuff. I thought, right. And the, the whole plan was to do um, a book called um, London Heathrow Guide. And it's all right, great. That's all good, all good. Um, started work on it. Didn't quite um, get it to where it needed to be for a launch in May 19. Mm -hmm. Mainly because all the bus books we were doing got in the way. So I thought, okay, no worries, I'll do it May 2020. Not a problem. And then COVID came along. And it was <laughs> like, oh, that's a Because <laughs> um, everything I've written was basically, was now just um, completely out of date. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It was mm -hmm. just, that's okay. So anyway, we might do that book next year. <laughs> 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 Maybe, who knows? <laughs> But anyway, in the meantime, um, we've we've obviously we've launched our London, LHR, our London Heathrow magazine. Um, that's been going over a year now. A um, bit of a strange thing. To, we launched it in December, no, November 2020. A bit of a stupid thing to do, considering you're in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. I did think it was quite important that um, we reported what happened during COVID and all the effects, because certainly at Heathrow, it was bonkers it was um all of a sudden loads and loads of cargo um workings or literally most of the flights were just cargo weren't they really um but yeah they had lots of different operators turning up and i thought we, we this needs to be written down somewhere mm. public. so we kind of did that and um and just kept obviously carrying it on i think we, we're up to issue eight now issue nine comes out next month um and then we've got literally uh as you guys are well aware, because we talked about it the other day, um, on s Saturday, I think it was, or maybe Friday, we've started work on, and this is thanks to a mate of mine called John Goodhell, who sent me literally tens of thousands of photos. And we're doing some <coughs> um, retro books on Heathrow, Manchester, Gatwick, AMA, and quite a few other places. And that that's kind of covering the period 95 to 2005 when you still your tri stars dc 10s just all sorts of weird stuff in operation mm -hmm. so we're really looking forward to that but before that um i'm working with charles kennedy on um a book we're calling a380 data files okay and the idea of that is that we will actually have a photo of every single a380 plus details of every individual um airframe and you know when it when it got delivered, what it, you know, da, 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 where it was stored during COVID, first flights, all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and we are hoping, <laughs> I think it's the 10th of April, that's the, um, the Heathrow Collectors Fair at Kempton Park. Okay. And we're hoping to have it on sale then. Oh, yeah. These, um, <laughs> these sort of older aircraft back in the night, like 95, as you say, how, how difficult was it sourcing? photos and information of those because they weren't obviously as readily available as they are these days well no my mate was is a real ad geek and he literally this, this is it here this little this tiny oh, that's a thing this tiny little usb stick <laughs> has literally tens of thousands of photos in that period wow yeah well um, yeah, I, 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 for example the heathrow i, I got all the heathrow pictures out <laughs> i looked at it and uh it's it was something like three thousand photos just on heathrow and i'm thinking how how am i going to get this down to about 220. it was like panic <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely it was kind of so what i've done is we just come up with kind of um kind of think of headings and stuff you know so it's like um what we've done is uh the obvious one was ba but all the ba stuff is stuff in land or livery that is a lot of you know you've got 737s 757s all this sort of stuff that the the, the, the um simple 7 100s 200s all this kind of stuff so we've done a ba section we've done um 
there's, an, there's a really good cargo section so some really interesting stuff came in obviously got concord in there um but obviously all the other airlines you know long hauls short hauls everything it's, it's really it's been really fascinating putting together i've now just got to write 250 captions or 230 captions for every book which is a bit of, well yeah it's scary. Yeah, so you, you say about the 380 book as well like a photo of every single one that, that must be incredible going through those I, I make no secret of the fact that i absolutely love the uh, the 380 so that'd be look i'm certainly gonna dash out and get when that's ready excellent yeah um it's actually been quite hard to get the pictures in fact i've we've got a list which we're going to put up at some point at tom's going to some point yes yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um of, of the ones we're missing i actually thought it'd be a lot easier than it is to get all the photos of all of them but it's not <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no. of the 250 whatever it is was it 270 i think we're missing about 25 30 of them but we'll get there it's a good chunk yeah. so far already that you've got Oh god, yeah, 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 yeah. I was going through it earlier, and as I was scrolling down, there's far less white spaces. You know what I mean? Because as you go through it, you, you're thinking, oh, a few weeks back, it was like you needed 150. So uh, yeah, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was quite. It was quite apparent last time I went to Heathrow a couple of weeks ago. The uh, the 380 resurgence is definitely on from from how it was before. Oh, you yeah. you might get maybe one Emirates, but when we went the other week there was probably five or six ended up coming in it was i think i think it's six it quite eight magnificent. Eight, isn't it? yeah and you've got uh singapore qatar and obviously you've got ba you've got three or four flights a day now as well mm -hmm. because yeah absolutely yeah the, the thing we noticed because obviously we, we kept going down heathrow sort of during the pandemic when we were allowed out and all that sort of stuff and it got i thought heathrow got very boring you were mm. out for like one three or four flights a day maybe do you know what I mean? It was rare, and you think, "Oh yeah, we're going." To... But yeah, now now the three eighties are coming back. It's giving it a bit more, a bit more oomph. Do you know what I mean? Something a little bit different. Because obviously yeah, so we lost the same... didn't we? So it's yeah. Yeah, and I was yeah. going to say that's a that's a sad loss to the industry. Not not ever knows going in. But in my book, the three eighty up for it. I know it's slightly controversial, but people prefer the. Uh, 747s but I don't think the three eighty is going to be around for that long. So you've got to appreciate them while they're here. Yeah, no, I agree. That's it's something it. different, isn't it? At the end of the day, something that is big. <laughs> yes, no, it's yeah. It. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I will just say, if anybody wants to ask Ken any questions this evening, do oh, get them into the chat. We'll ask him. <laughs> within yeah. reason, we'll keep yeah. it within reason. Um, <laughs> but if yeah, if anybody wants to uh, uh, ask Ken any questions, uh, do get them into the chat. We'll get them asked uh, throughout the show. What we are going to do, Ken, uh, I know you've been sending me uh, content pretty much for since sort of uh, the weekend. Um, we're going to show sort of little snippets you've sent me of this book. Uh, for the A380 that you have sent um, cool. Cool. to me. So for anybody that might be interested in this book, um, here's, a, I mean, it's a couple, it's like a page that's inside and also the front cover um, as well. Um, so just talk, yeah, talk, talk to us a little bit about uh, sort of the the layout to this. Um, right. To this so sort of book here. the book comprises, in effect, three parts. The first part, um, which is being written by Charles Kennedy, um, is the history obviously illustrate blah 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 um the, the second part of the book is what you're seeing here which is basically in the order they were built or their construction number and it gives you the you know the kind, kind of gen you're going to get for every single aircraft so on there obviously it, it says whether it's an, eight, an a380 841 or an 861 depending on its engines it says what engines are what its construction number is who's operating it what its status is um and I must admit, when I was uh, working on this a couple of months ago, most of them were still stored. Now they're all coming back. So we're constantly having to go through every blooming week, updating it. <laughs> anyway, then you've got first flight, delivery, what the uh, cabin configuration is, and then notes, which is basically like the test range number, whether it carries a special delivery, if it's been withdrawn, where it, where it was stored during COVID, you know, all that kind of idea. And then the final part of the book, which I think you might have a picture of. We, we're doing um, just a, a load of different tables, uh, things like, you know, dates in the service, because it's actually quite weird that uh, just just as a, a 
a rogue example. So, like the 53rd one built didn't end up getting into service until it was the 100th into service, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So obviously the thing was being built and obviously something happened to it. I don't know what, obviously, but yeah. So, and there's, there's all sorts of tables planned for the back of it. And I reckon it's going to be around um, 200 pages. It's going to be A5. Wow, okay. Um, it's going to be a softback. It was originally going to be a hardback, but we're going to do it as a softback because my printers uh, just do a hardback. Hardback will take nine weeks to get it back. And the situation is literally changing daily on the 380s. So I want that, that information on each individual plane to be as accurate as possible at the time of publication. And it will take my print. If you do it softback, it will take us three days to get that from print, for, from me sending the proofs to getting it back as a book. And I'm wow. thinking that'll do. That'll mm. do because Make it's going to be bang up to date. And, that, and it's important because obviously it is going to change. Maybe we can do a second volume in a year's time or two years' time. I don't know. But I want it on day of publication to be pretty much up to date as possible. So I think that's quite important, really. <laughs> no, of course. Of course. Mm. And of course, this is the sort of front of the book as well so for anybody that might be sort of wanting to to find it once it's done it um, is actually it is actually available for sale on the website now we have there, you go, then. there you go yeah so if anyone wants to know um what the book is here it is that's the front cover um and as ken said it's available to buy it now so if you want to go onto the website um and take a look uh do do so right well not right now because we want you to carry on watching uh, yeah i was going to ask you ken about the um the ones what you've got missing uh the 25 or so what you um what you're struggling to find do you know roughly where these specific and uh, you know these specific airframes are, are located are they specific to one airline or are they um dotted yeah, around all over? um obviously there's quite a few emirates and actually it's more than more the um the newer Emirates, to be fair, mm. the ones that have come into service in the last sort of three years or so, or whatever. Um, but we've got some of the early Singapore's we need to find. We have, um, I've, I've found a guy on Flickr who basically, I think he must live in Toulouse. And he's pretty much got everything. Right, right. So um, he has responded mm. to my Flickr mail. Um, mm. I just need to respond a bit, bit more. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you, so you, you're well on with actually finding these, um, these missing planes, and so you, you, yeah, you but, will get there with them, won't you? Yeah, oh yeah. Because all, all you need to do is go on Flickr, and there's millions, well, hundreds of photos of each of these aircraft. Yeah. Um, but what you try not to have to do is um, with Flickr, you can um, send somebody a message. But I've noticed in the past, you know, probably. You probably get about a thirty-five percent response. So yeah. it's a long job. So I'm thinking, yeah. one that's got loads of pictures. It, yeah, he says yes. It makes it easy. Do you know what I mean? And that, mm. that is quite important. Yeah, yeah. It tends to be one of those um, platforms that don't really get you know they, they get looked over, don't they? Flickr, I suppose. Yeah, I must admit, yeah. we 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 use Flickr a lot for um, on our bus book side when we're stuck for something. For example, yeah. we were, doing, we're, we're just about to put into uh, print a book on the Boris Master bu uh, buses in London. And what actually happened with them, three of them actually went on a worldwide tour. And it's like, we need photos of this for the, the book. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was a really long job. But I've now got a Boris Master bus in um, Colombia. We've got New York, uh, Poland, Hong Kong, all over wow. But yeah. it was a long job, you know what I mean? And it's kind of you're thinking this is actually only about five pages of the book, and it's probably taken us two weeks' hard work to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could do a book on them tours, couldn't you? Oh well, we, we very nearly did. Um, yeah. But what happened was um, we actually spoke with the guy that was in charge of it all at. Um, right bus the people that made the buses and uh, we had a meeting in london in some private club it was all very nice and we thought great we're in here and then the bloke went very quiet on us because during that meeting what we decided was we would they would give us the full story of what happened we thought this is gonna be good and access loads of photos but of course it never 
I don't know, just never happened. Just never happened. No, yeah. It's just one of these where, I don't know, sometimes people talk to you and they, they promise you Earth and you just then they disappear. Mm. And, and he even disappeared about questions about the, the things in service as well. We had loads of questions about Boris Barsley. It's quite a controversial subject anyway in London. But anyway, so, yeah. Yeah. So the, you know, that was blown out, which is a shame because I thought it would be a really good book. Right, yeah, but it would have been. So, so where do you think you like your passion for, not just for aviation, but for transport in general? Because you seem to have covered every base, don't you, from right from yeah, buses well, right up to planes? Yeah, it, to be fair, um, railways is my biggest passion. Yeah. Diesels. Not yeah, lots yeah, of steam, yeah. So I don't quite like steam, but it's diesels. Mm. Um, but aviation, I remember Dad taking me to um, Queen's Building at Heathrow. Mm. And getting the ice spy book. Do you remember the ice spy books? Oh yeah, <laughs> not me. <laughs> not oh, me. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you're talking <laughs> car journeys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Over. yeah, we, we had an ice spy book for, for aircraft or something. You know, so you, you got to spot a tanker. All right, yeah, got on there. Yeah, got to spot a tug. Yeah, got that. Got twenty <laughs> points in that. Yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> which books you're on about now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so did that, and then. In the sort of late seventies, we'd go up to Milton Hall to the air show every year, and it's all, yeah, it's it's always been an interest. But if because I've I've been in um, the video game well, as it was since Christ, uh, about nineteen ninety. Okay, so right. my, my full time job was um, work. I was a marketing manager for. Um, a video company that made railway videos and then i got poached by somebody else i went and worked for him as well um and when it's your job you actually find it quite hard to um because people say oh, it must be great doing something that you're really interested in yeah it is but it's also mm. it then becomes a job and not a hobby absolutely mm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, bit, I get that a different dynamic going on mm. and yeah so it's in a way it's kind of ruined the hobby <laughs> yeah but you know it is at least you know about it i think that's that's the thing with it it's like any business you gotta know what, well hopefully you know what you, you're talking about yeah um, you to know your subject definitely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, of course. the one thing i didn't know about was buses at all um when i said come on, we, we, we've got to go up london we'll have a look at these buses i said why I said, no no we're gonna to have to do some something else I said, okay so he took me to uh, Oldwich, and I'm just watching these buses. I took the camera, the video camera, and, like, and filming all these buses. And it was like, actually, this is all right, because with railways, by that time, we're now talking about 2011, on the railways, you'd go out and you would film probably something for about, you'd come out about three minutes of footage. Yeah. Of interesting stuff from the day, yeah? With buses... I had two and a half hours footage from one afternoon. I'm thinking, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he persuaded me to do it. And it was it was a good thing he did because what happened was we were doing DVDs, but I also came up in the very first year of the thing we call the London Bus Guide, which is an annual book, which is basically tells you all the operators, buses that operate in London, all the routes, garages, all that sort of stuff. And because the London bus thing moves so quickly, because every five years, they could, each route, each of the 300, 400 routes come up for tender. 20% of them come up for a renewal every year. So there's always something changing. So we've been able to do that year in, year out. I think we're up to 11th year of doing that now, something like that. And that's been really good. Mm. You know, we've done lots of other books and saying loads and loads of bus books now. And at the time, the DVD market was starting to go completely down. Mm. YouTube and stuff and streaming and all this and yeah so it's actually actually been a, a godsend to the company but it's not particularly something i'm that, that interested in do you know what i mean mm. yeah, I've learned about it and obviously but you know it's railways and planes for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's part of your business it's part of your business isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely yeah. well take a quick pause because there's a lot of hellos <laughs> so we're going to mm. try and get through uh, quite a few hellos here. There's comments coming in left, right, and center. So uh, we're going to start with uh, Liz Robinson, who says, Ken equals legend. <laughs> Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incidentally, Liz, Liz <laughs> takes some photos you'll see on Instagram. She's well worth it if you don't already. 
she's yeah, she's yeah, really good. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah, her editing skills are very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, absolutely very on point. And TikTok, I'm sure, I'm sure Liz is on TikTok as well. Uh, we we got? Uh, Mark Webster says, "Good evening, young Clive," and that's on Facebook. Uh, we were talking about the magazine, which I'll bring up uh, very, very shortly. But Darren Graham Photography says it's a great magazine. Um, Thank you, Graham. Well, so uh, good shout on that one. Uh, hide your APUs. Jack Rolls is in the house. He says, "Good yeah, evening." Yeah, crikey. Uh, yeah, 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 that's that's right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally any holes a goal with him. Um, yeah, yeah, he said good evening all. Um, we also, there's literally so much here. I'm just trying to get through here. Julian Nolan, a familiar face to myself, uh, says good evening all. So evening Oops. to you. Yeah, good evening. Right. Uh, let's see. Just going to go through. Right. Jack Rolls has a question for you, which we'll jump on to a little bit after that. We, we talk about the magazine. But he says, out of all the aircraft that you've seen, uh, what one was your favorite? And do you have a favorite from that aircraft slash airline? You want me to answer that now? Yeah, you can say it now. Vulcan. Vulcan. RAF. Favourite yeah. airline. <laughs> yeah, Vulcan. <laughs> Shot on street arms, I love, I love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep yeah. it at the Vulcan. Oh, Don't you say anything else. Don't you say anything yeah. else about the Vulcan. If no. you know the Vulcan, you know it. That's very much it. Yeah. Um, let's just have a look here as well. Just going through... Uh, just trying to get the hello. There's so many to go through. It's not even funny. Uh, another familiar face to myself. Jane Harker says, hello, you lot. So hello to you. Yep. Good evening, Jane. I hope you're good. Okay. Um, in there as well. Hi, Matteo. Yep. See, I've seen his name pop up. There it is. Uh, if I put it, that's the wrong one. That's the, <laughs> that's the, I think that's the shop one that Loopy's put in there, but I'm just trying to say literally just coming through very quickly. Uh, there you go. Matteo uh, saying, loving the podcast, guys. Go Ken. <laughs> Cheers, Matteo. Hope you're good. Wonderful stuff. Uh, we'll just briefly touch upon the a magazine that you guys have been doing, uh, the mm. LHR magazine. Um, here's sort of a cover for those that um, sort of might not know of it uh how long have you sort of been, been doing this magazine for and what sort of inspired you to kind of focus on on heathrow okay well basically as i mentioned earlier wanted back in 2019 i wanted to do the um the london or well, the heathrow guide book maybe the idea would be all the operators all the aircraft all the schedules where to go and watch them blah blah, blah. um as i said kind of missed me deadline for that twice uh, once and then covid came along um so what we did was i was getting itchy feet with it really and uh, so i think it was about last october 2020 i thought because we already do a london bus magazine every two months mm -hmm. and i thought i'm gonna do a magazine on heathrow <laughs> it's the hardest thing i've ever done it really <laughs> is it's oh. I love it and we're getting really good feedback from it but personally yeah. wow that is really it's really hard to put together and i've got some brilliant guys in the background that supply stuff and it's just like wow but anyway yeah so we're up to issue eight that came out uh middle of february issue nine's due out middle of april and the idea is you've got 20 odd news pages you know, so whatever's been going on at the airport, da, da, da. and then we have articles that feature, um, and I forgot, I meant to send you these to give you an idea, but I've forgotten to send them. But basically, you've got articles on old and new stuff, do you know what I mean? Like on that that issue, you've got, um, that was issue one, we featured Air France's caravels, yeah, yeah. an airline profile each month. You know, first one, as you see there, was Virgin. We've done BA, but we've also done um, some of the American Airlines and all the other ones. We also do a, like a gone but not forgotten section, mm -hmm. which is what that Air France Caravels was kind of doing. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to cover the history as well as the current with it. You know, just try and make it a really interesting read. It's around about, normally about 68 pages, say five. Mm -hmm. um, literally way over 100 photos. It's probably getting close to 200 photos in each issue and somewhere in the region of 30 40 000 words as well so you know it's a good read well, i hope it's a good read um um yeah it's 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 doing okay um i'd like it obviously to do a lot better mm. um to be fair but yeah. you know <laughs> we've launched in a pandemic and <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm quite yeah i'm quite surprised it was it, the response it's got has been brilliant 
Mm. Yeah, it looks it, absolutely um, fantastic. Where can people get hold of copies there, Ken? Right. You can either get it direct from us at the website, um, but we've also got some stockists, two of which are brilliant, and, and people that know me get this. We have two pubs at Heathrow that sell it. <laughs> <laughs> we have the, the Green One Man thing. and the Three Magpies. <clears throat> um, Aviation Retail Direct at Heathrow and uh, um, the other the building. Can, one begins with H, can't remember where it is, uh, but they sell it. But also, um, if you go to um, Manchester, the uh, aviation shop at the um, View oh, of the mm. they, 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 they're a very good supporter of us. And certainly for the new books, we were talking to them last. Hillingdon, thank you, uh, Matthew. Yeah, um, yeah um, we were talking last night because. We've got the A380 book, which will be popular at Manchester anyway, because the A380 is very popular. And then the next two books is LHR and Manchester. And they've already backing us on the Manchester book, which is really good. Oh, so big, uh, big shout out to Alison, who runs a shop there. And, uh, you know, it is a really good shop at Manchester. So, yeah, I recommend. And they, they stock the magazine as well. And we are, we are hope or trying. It's, this is a long process, but we are trying to get it in, into the terminals that he throws as well. Oh, well. quite important, I think. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Mm. Yeah, slow and steady yeah. 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 Not kind yeah. of what we need in the current environment, but you know, hey, we're <laughs> <it. laughs> I mean, I've not tried to sort of do an online magazine sort of thing. I know I subscribe to a couple of magazines in their online editions, but I just, just scroll across on my iPad. Yeah, I, I think it's my age. Right. I have our, our very first book, to be fair, right? This is, uh, this was, oh, God, blimey. Um, you must have met 2007, something like that, right? And um, what we did, <laughs> this was kind of before we could do it online. We actually did a book on a CD, right? <laughs> right. It be printed. <laughs> uh, and we couldn't work out a way of how to send PDFs via the computer. Over there. So we did it on a CD. And much <laughs> more amazing, we actually sold 100 copies. Wow. Of this, which was basically a PDF on a, on a CD. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Actually, now, now it's a lot. Lots Just going to bring that comment up from Donna O'Brien. Yeah, no, I can see that. Well. <laughs> yeah, Don, Donna's one of the mods on our live streams. So behave, Donna. I can yeah. see you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that, um, I was going to say the, the British Airways 740 is such a bittersweet plane for me because um, during the first lockdown, they all came and got stalled at Bournemouth. And the final one I ever saw was yeah. actually flying to its, um, its, its resting home. So it's always a little bit of a uh, tinge of sadness to see a photo of them these days, to be quite honest. Yeah, don't, don't buy the next magazine. We're doing a whole... <laughs> 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 uh, no. That's it. It'll be a proper, good we'll, 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 endorsement. <laughs> we, we went to um, Dunsfold when Landor came in, being a oh, yeah. um, when it arrived. That was just awesome. It really was. And there is a video on the YouTube channel of it because literally it's a fairly short runway. And he did we, what happened was as he approached Dunsfold, he was coming from Cardiff. I think was, yeah, Cardiff, yeah. And he came past the north of the airfield, went round the back, and then he did like uh, is it Kai Tok in Hong Kong? You know that yeah, when it's yeah, that yeah. really tight turn. And we yeah. thought, oh, he's just gonna have another fly over. No, he was landed and he slammed on the brakes. And for about two minutes afterwards, there was still smoke coming off the tires. It was <laughs> unreal. And then, of course, yeah, Landor was God. Landor was sitting in Bournemouth, and uh, it was it was a crazy the amount of times my uh, daily exercise took me past the airport, even though it's sort of five six miles from where I live. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And also, then, uh, was, was it last year, Landor? Yeah, it was here, Landor. Um, it landed December. When, yeah, that was December 2020, 2020, wasn't it? And then um, last year we were involved with Speedbird TV doing the, um, we had the Landor experience at Dunsfold, which was a really good day, mainly because we sold loads and loads of stuff on our sales stand. But um, no, <laughs> I didn't actually. Because <laughs> I, I literally got on the aircraft for about five minutes <laughs> because I was doing the stand and there were so many people coming <clears> in. And you obviously have to let the customers do their stuff they paid for it obviously but yeah that was yeah, pretty cool. cool that was mm. cool i'm just going to uh bring up said uh video um 
<laughs> Adam, so that I can see your message, understanding Adam. for sort of the streaming side of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah get it to the bit. actual landing bit. I've got it. I think there you go. Just as it's approaching. Yeah, that's on approach. That was coming yeah. past the north of the airfield. So we'll run this in the background. Um, and so I imagine this was a huge turnout at, at Dunsfold for this. It was kind of invited guests only. This was, um, again, it was the Speedbird guys that got me in there. Um, there wasn't loads of people, but there was, there was enough, as you'll see when it bloody lands. Sorry, sir. when it lands, <laughs> they all were all like in a nice long line and they all just tsk, all, all rush in front of you. You know what I mean? It's oh, great. But yeah, so this is it. I suppose just checking out the runway, I guess. Um, yeah, final final fur. Well, fly by. Yeah, it, it it did a yeah, it basically did a circuit. What was the mood like in all of the see Did people just sort of stop and say um, silent when they saw this one coming around, or was it a case of everyone just no, sort of gasping was, in awe of it? I think it was excitement, really, because um, obviously it's been saved. It it wasn't wasn't sad do you know what i mean when we went up to manchester uh also that year i think it was yeah um to see one of the virgin ones go one and that really was sad hmm. well i was doing a live stream and it did a really brilliant wing wave and trying to actually comment after it you know you're choking up <clears> you know, <throat> and it was yeah. like oh, i've got now i've got to say something now and is he <laughs> do you know what i mean it's like but I think yeah. with this, because you knew it was saved, it was a little bit different. Um, yeah, it's it's. I suppose because it's obviously the seven four seven, it's quite a well loved aircraft uh, mm. for a lot of people. So, yeah, sorry, it's seen, terrible especially terrible work as well. Especially for like myself, <laughs> I've grown up when I lived in Feltham and things like that. I I grew up on hearing the seven four sevens pretty much on a, on, a, on a daily basis, whether they were landing or taking off. Um, and then obviously next thing you know is that they're, they're, they're gone from the sky sort of thing just very, very quickly. I know they had a bit more life to them and we probably should have lost them next year. But yes, obviously the, yeah. the, the pandemic um, obviously sped that up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think it came as a massive shock. But I think if you've grown up on them, especially with your own like national airline, it, it does seem to like hit a little bit harder because it's, yeah. it's like your, your childhood is, or yeah, what you've grown up on has just now been wiped, wiped clean. I think I think yeah. it came even more shocking because even up up until I think February 2020, there was still 20 odd flights a day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it was mm -hmm. 20, it was up to 24. I can't I can't quite remember the exact figures, but yeah. And it was like here we go. This is some, we thought I was going to just fly over the airfield again, or did he just do, well, you'll see him anyway. But yeah, so I think with the um, the seven fours, it became such a shock because they. Yeah, they were going to be out of service next year or maybe 2024. But for them all to go literally in one hit, which is basically what happened, apart from the odd flight in June, um, May and June, it was just shocking, really. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think that was part of the problem, weren't it? I mean, nobody had really had time to, to take it in, did they? And then they just sort of, you sort of took them for granted anyway. I mean, I, I, I've seen them at Manchester many, many times and, um, you, you just take them for granted, and they're you know beautiful things to watch, but they, they, they sort of got snatched away overnight. And and they, they, like I think a few people have said they were never that proper farewell, they, they didn't yeah. fade away, they were just taken away from you, sort of thing. Yeah. And I think that were um part of the it, problem, though, weren't it? It was brutal, wasn't it? At the end of the day, it was just like that to not fly. We, we were at um Heathrow for the last two departed, which was an absolutely horrendous day weather wise. and. Unfortunately, we were holed up in the um, Novotel on the viewing deck there. So mm. we're inside anyway. So I've got rain on the blooming windows. It was just like, oh, oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> just about. <laughs> but even because um, they were going to do this dual departure, which never happened, but they did do the fly past on 27 uh, on the southern runway. Left and it, even, yeah. even seeing that from the north side was really difficult because the weather was so atrocious mm. yeah again we've been so lucky in Bournemouth this year that we've actually had one of the ex um virgin 747s in and the old iron maiden um oh, yeah. well, chat. loopy who's on on our chat here he's <clears> the <throat> um a roadie for iron maiden 
Oh, oh really? Wow. It is, um, wow. It's naked yeah. now, unfortunately. It's just got the blue yeah. tail. All the Iron no, no, Maiden's off it. Turn. This is that turn it did. It was just like bonkers. Yeah. It's it's so close to the <clears throat> You almost kind of, when you sort of watch it, if you're, you know, if you were, I suppose, being there and stuff, you're kind of watching it come in, which I'm sort of wishing that, one, it kind of wasn't happening. Because obviously yeah. they're, they're ripping that band aid off before you're even prepared for it, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. there's only one more flight after, and that was the Boac, wasn't it? Uh, from Cardiff to Cardiff, basically. Yeah. That yeah. was mad. That was a mad flight as well, wasn't it? At least I they took so. it for a little bit of a spin because it was. You could actually mm. see it from St Athen. You could actually see it taking off from Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Taking off from Cardiff, and luckily it's crazy. It yeah, it's really crazy. Pain. And this is when all the I believe pumps on YouTube. On YouTube, there's yeah. actually a video of it uh, in the cockpit being filmed that particular flight as well. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no Sam Chu was down there doing stuff, wasn't he? Did you call these people? Like, we're all like nice <laughs> kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah you watch, I, I don't know if I caught the brakes steaming, but oh my God. He really put the anchors on. I took loads of photos, though, didn't I? <laughs> Yes, Sarah it must be quite emotional. Yeah, it must have been emotional you know? for the pilots as well. We spent years on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what mm. we noticed when we did that um, lander experience last summer, there was so many um, BA crew and pilots and just coming because a bit like we just said, they never got a chance to say goodbye. They just went, and it was their kind of. Look at the brakes. Look at the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can see that with how short he was when he stopped. It was a very yeah. short landing, that, weren't yeah. it? But yeah, so, so we had a lot of crew come, and it was their kind of their chance to grieve and say goodbye. Yeah. It was really quite strange. You know what I mean? There you go. Look, there's a smoke. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was quite nice to do. There was, you know, we had loads of cabin crew come to that event, and it was, yeah, it was kind of cathartic for them, which was. I thought it was really nice. You know what I mean? But forget us ab geeks. You know, these people worked on them day in, day out. And yeah. they were just lit from their lives. Do you know what I mean? And they were really, really heartbroken. It's yeah. so iconic. Even even people who aren't into aviation would be able to tell you what one was. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumbo mm -hmm. Jet. Everyone knows a Jumbo Jet, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm quite glad because obviously I think you have to kind of almost take your hats off to Speedbird TV for the fact that they did a really good job with the Save Landor movement as well yeah. that, that sort of went mm -hmm. viral and then they obviously you know that's that's why Landor sits where it does today otherwise it'd be you know you'd be drinking out of it and your, your Coke cans and stuff and <clears throat> you know it's it's nice to have that there so you know people like myself that absolutely adore the livery can go and see it and you know really appreciate it for for, for what it is and you know and of course you know the opportunity to stand right up next to a 747 i don't think you're going to turn that down are you well yeah we, we spent yeah. obviously we, we did the the event on saturday but myself matteo uh glenn we were all down there on the friday trying to work out how uh, best to run the show basically and but yeah so we were all kind of all over it and under it and it was just fantastic do you know what i mean so standing under a 747 it's just like wow yeah yeah i bet and of course, it's not just um, not just those sort of um, streams that you do. Obviously, you stream from uh, sort of various different airports as well. I think Stansted being one of them, as well as Heathrow as well. Um, do you have any sort of um, memories that, or, or particular sort of events from, um, say, one of these like streams from a Stansted or something that will always stick to your mind and go, "I can't believe I managed to see that at X Y Z airport." Um, I think. Normally, whenever you go somewhere, there's always something which kind of surprises you that you, you're not expecting. Oh, I, I remember. Remember when yeah, we well, Sarah's going to interject here. Yeah. Remember <laughs> when we were at Stansted <laughs> and it was a thunderstorm and like we had all those planes. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We had, yeah, we, we did a stream at Stansted um, and we, we, we literally had a mad half hour. There was just all sorts going on. There was a thunderstorm around the area. There was planes I bought in landings and then in the midst of all this there was a private jet that literally 
did every single taxiway at Stansted. <laughs> We're just <laughs> watching this thing just drive or riding around. It's just mad. Wow. And then he went back to the, yeah. um, the Harris Hangers. No, I, whether they were training some, I don't know, but that was pretty mad. Um, another good one was the, oh, I can't remember, it's Reg, but it was an XBA um, 747-200. It's been in that he throw since, but that came into um, in the Stancil, which was good. And obviously Stancil is handy for us because it's 20, 20 minutes up the road. Um, but no, what else? Oh, no, we We've been lucky to see loads of. I tell another great moment was seeing a China Southern. This is before they came into Heathrow, because they came into Heathrow in 2020 for a little while. We went to Amsterdam and getting one. That's it. Geo. Here we go. This yeah, is the one. one. Yeah, it's not the greatest film, but yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I think the MD11s isn't it at Stansted. Yeah. Yeah, I've been lucky to see the the MD Elevens at Stansted, albeit under the the, the cloud of darkness. Um, I went, I think probably at the wrong time, which was. Back don't go Sunday. Don't, and, don't go Sunday. Every other day, and since COVID, because it was getting to be, Stansted probably get MD Elevens three or four times a week. Mm. Um, during this COVID thing, at one point it was three there a day. It was just pretty yeah. cool. My this mission is... to kind of go on a bit of a hunt for them, and uh, I, I went for the hunt, and uh, it <laughs> got dark by about half past four, and you're like, oh, they come in about five o'clock, so it was like you can only see the lights <laughs> and stuff. You knew it was there, but you know it wasn't quite the yeah. same as actually seeing it in daylight. For those watching, this is actually um, taken from what they call Belma Road. If you Belma put that Road. in Google, yeah, yeah. And you, basically you park up in Belma Road. There's a little line of trees. You walk through trees, and basically you've got the fence and the airport. I was a bit late. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask. He throws quite well documented for spotting places. Is Stan said sort of decent? Is there a few locations? Um, there are. It's not great. No. Fair, but um, no. you've got Belmar Road. But if if you park up at Belmar Road, you've got this like, I don't know, about 20 foot of trees or 10 foot of trees. You can go through them and you've got the airport. If you head to your right, uh, there's a mound about probably 150 metres along. Which is okay but if you go another 75 meters on beyond that there's an even better mound yeah which is okay. quite close to um the pretend the training control tower and where they have the uh, airplane that they practice yeah, fire you know for the, for the firefighters um they're pretty good but you if you're a stills photographer you get away with it because depending which way they're landing you can get shots over the fence from those two yeah. locations from uh, yeah, the video it's a bit trickier okay yeah stan said it's tricky it's tricky to spot at and that's where the mound that ken was just talking about was where you know my video that's on my channel the two hour long one mm -hmm. but all the maxes in it and stuff that's where it was filmed yeah it was yeah. from that mound and it's very very difficult it's easy to get to once you get to belmont road it's literally a short cut yeah. through the trees and stuff um and then you're practically there it's just it's a, a bit of a nuisance to to spot at because there's not there is, there is another mound at the uh give me the south the southwest end of the runway yeah mm -hmm. there's as as you as you go into the belmar uh, belmar road there's a novatel on your left right yeah and just opposite where that is there is a mound so you're right at the end of the runway that's quite good but there are trees again good for stills a bit harder for video yeah yeah, yeah, I was going to say to uh, Ian, there's a question from Rob Brown's just popped up, actually, which is sort of relevant to that, if you want to read it out there. Yeah, so he says, is the area around Stansted not owned by the airport directly, so parking and spotting can be tricky? You never have any problems with, no. uh, certainly Belmont Road, you don't have problems. No. Um, and to be fair, they're, they're quite, um, they seem quite friendly up there, really. You know, you stay behind the fence, obviously you can't go beyond the fence anyway, but yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, those mounds we've talked about, it's been fantastic. Never, yeah. never had a problem. Never I'd happily go there again. Um, it's a really, really decent spot once you actually get there. Traping through the mud that, I, that, that we got. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a different thing. <laughs> so I'd put like wellies and stuff this time because I was like, yeah. you know, you, yeah. otherwise you, your shoes are ruined, your, your, your trousers are ruined. <laughs> so wellies we, are. are, are we we went there me. about a week, week and a half ago, and it was, oh my God. It just looked, it, even. 
the bit when you come through the trees was waterlogged. Yeah. And I was looking down the path thinking, you're never never going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. Um, question here yeah. from David. Oh, now, my eyesight's gone a little bit weird. I'll bring it up. Uh, it's, uh, from David on Facebook says, Evening, Ken. Will we see you at Stanford on Sunday? Geo Sky 747-200 in a new paint job due at quarter past two. Yeah, I've just seen that. Yeah, hopefully we might actually manage to get out for that. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be decent weather as well this weekend from what I've oh, heard. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, it's supposed tomorrow. to be getting a little bit hotter, uh, especially tomorrow. up sort of that way, you know, sort of more towards London way. So um would be a good a good opportunity, that. Yeah, like well, thanks, that thanks that, David. Yes, yeah, good shout. <clears throat> I'd like to see that myself, but it's uh, about four and a half hour drive, so <laughs> <laughs> not quite around the corner like it used to be. Um, but yeah, we'll go. Just oh, oh, go through some comments, um, just very quickly. Sorry, Steve. We'll just go through some comments as well. Right, Ian, Ian's disappeared, and uh, we'll just go through. Uh, so Daniel Vott uh, says, "Good evening, nerds." <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Oh. So hello to you. He's spotting TV, Daniel. He is indeed. Yeah, I recognise the name. Um, just going to go through some more here. Uh, Daniel Vott says, uh, in Frankfurt, we're lucky to still see the MD-11s until uh, Lufthansa got rid of them. Because yeah. uh, that was recently, yeah, yeah. recently, I think, a couple months ago, something like that. You never know anymore yeah. because time seems to fly by so quickly. It's it's crazy. And things change, well, right? but, Yeah, they're still getting the, um, the Lufty 747s, aren't they, at Frankfurt? So that's, uh, that sort of softens the blow a little bit. It certainly does. Um, Tony O'Reilly on YouTube says hello. So hello, hi Tony. Um, oh, right. just keep scrolling up here. Um, yeah, Loopy uh, says, "Don't be afraid to ask a question." Yeah, if you've got any questions for Ken, literally just chuck them in the chat, um, and we'll um, we'll get them sort of read out um, as well. Also, if you missed your comment, obviously try and put it in there again, and we'll, we'll get Actually, it read out. Going back to Rob Brown's comment there. Um, Stance is actually owned by the same people that own Manchester, I believe, which is quite weird. They are. I'm, I'm <laughs> certain they are. Yeah. Is it MAG or something? Something like that. Is it, yeah, Manchester like that. Airport. MAG or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they are. I think that's who they are. Yeah, but no, I must admit, they seem pretty, pretty cool and good at Stance. Same as they are in um, Manchester, to be fair, especially Southside, which is a brilliant place to go. Yeah. Ian will vouch for that. He'll say that Southside's a pretty Southside's good place to go. Fantastic. You can't beat it. You can't beat Manchester, I don't think, for spotting. Apart from you, getting you know, over that stupid gate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apart from getting over that stupid gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if, it, if it's well, I, down, I was gonna... walk up the, the walk up the hill can get a bit tedious at times and slippery, Just... can't it? And then <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. muddy bank embankment there. I think we've all slid down that on our bombs yeah. before today, haven't yeah. we? Then, then you're stuffed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> oh, oh, we're sliding down there, or you're getting sunburned like me and Ian did when we went that oh, time. Yeah, yeah. I'm still scarred yeah. from that day. Yeah. <laughs> but don't don't yeah. stay at the hotel, which is by that gate. You know the nearest hotel. Don't stay there. Oh, you mean no? Oh, it's horrible. That was really grim. Were it? Yeah. yeah. No names for legal. Yeah, reasons. no names. It's cheap and grim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't particularly want to be getting ourselves into trouble. No, so, um, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're no, you're fine. I'm, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'll tell you what. I'll go through and grab another video just while we go there, because um, I know you caught the lucky um, Hercules that came into Heathrow oh. um, about yeah, eight yeah. or nine months ago, yeah. uh, which is quite a catch. Yeah, it said that it did it actually quite a few times in the week. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was really good news that it, yeah, it did it for about a week so okay <laughs> let's just bring that up here we go so this is the very rare air algeri cargo uh hercules that, that, mm. that uh, did sort of the, the frequent one uh freak yeah freak what I can't even say it. Pretty regular good. run uh, for, a, <laughs> for for about a week or so. Um, quite a good sight, this. Um, I know the Hercules used to come into Heathrow a, a good while back, I remember. But um, yeah, pretty cool to see one coming in in 20, uh, was it 2021. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, it was just after lockdown ended, I think. Was it all this 20? I can't remember. Um, yeah, it was. The whole thing's just become a blur, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I know you've got to be right back, Ken, so we'll let you yeah. just be right back quickly. 
Uh, Ken will be back, um, and we'll just quickly uh, run through some more comments while we are here. Um, so we have got there's, there's literally so many. I'm trying to literally go through them all. Um, yeah, that Hercules under Heathrow is incredible, isn't it? Like you, you, you don't you don't associate it with with Heathrow in the slightest, do you? An amazing catcher, and it's great footage as well, of course. Yeah, absolutely not. It, it's 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 one of those very very rare things that you probably won't see now for a, a long time. I'm trying to think of the 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 airlines before that used to operate them in, mm -hmm. but I know that the the cargo variant and sort of the the civil variant of the the Hercules isn't uncommon because I know Delta had a few back in the day as well um, before sort of getting rid of them. I'm trying to think who else. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's quite quite a sight to see a, a civilian um, Hercules uh, at Heathrow. Well, particularly city you've got Norfolk literally next door to it as well. <laughs> Easier, <laughs> yeah. just in time for the takeoff and a beer. Lovely. <laughs> Quick loo break and get another beer. <laughs> Go on. What's your what's your tipple for now? What's, because I know you were drinking uh, something. Otherwise, because I've run out of my London Pride. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Because I just went to the local shop and I couldn't carry more than uh, the three bottles plus uh, Sarah's Budweiser and get me fags and all the other. Probably because you drank the four and also bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite excited to see that Hercules taken off in front of you at Heathrow. Yeah, just a shame that it was from there really, because, as you see, it's a bit of a, a naff location. Yeah, um, Heathrow is actually quite difficult. Um, for video, to be fair, you know, there's a couple of hotels that uh, are now possibilities, but yeah, it's, it is really quite hard to, mm. um, you know, get decent shots, really. Yeah, yeah. it's <clears throat> I can sort of vouch for that having done Myrtle Avenue recently, and um, <laughs> Tony, yeah, even Myrtle <laughs> Avenue itself is not, it's not fantastic because you've always got an obstacle in the way. I think Heathrow could probably do with a little bit of a... Uh... Actually, can I just say something about Myrtle? Yeah, go for it. Well, I told, right, um, just, this is really good, good news, really. Um, I think it was back end of last year sometime. Um, James Shine is one of, he basically promotes my magazine for me, um, organised a litter pick at Myrtle Avenue. And we got the councillors down there, local councillors, and oh my god, it is just ridiculous the amount of litter at that place. And what's more remarkable is there's no bins. So you know, James went on a mission, and he contacted Heathrow and said, "Look, will you help us out here? We want, we think there should be bins." And much to my surprise, what's happened is we we were kind of asking for some bins from Terminal Four. Heathrow said, "No, you can't do that. We're getting you proper bins or new bins." So Heathrow Airport are going to supply bins. Hounslow Council are going to empty them real and they're also talking about putting an information board up as well and oh, it's really, okay. really yeah oh, fantastic. all we all we now need yeah. to do is persuade them to put another <clears throat> know, 400 tons of earth to get that mound above the yeah. fence and be happy days <laughs> <laughs> <Here's hoping. laughs> oh, yeah. it's, you know it, it's really good that he throw come on board on this campaign yeah it, it, it's nice to see someone like he throw you know but I, actually Acknowledging that people are, 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 are spotting there as well, where I know there's a few airports who, who just don't want you near the place. Like I think Gatwick's one of them, isn't it? Where yeah, you Gat just don't want you near it. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but I must just, the thing yeah. with Merton is obviously it's used by the locals as well for mm. nefarious drinking in the evenings. Do you know what I mean? It's not just plain spotters that are causing the problem. But you know, it, it, overall, it's got to be good news. Because we, were, yeah. we actually did a live stream the day we did the litter pick and Sarah grabbed her one of these bin bags and probably within a radius of five minutes, ten, 10 feet from where my camera was, mm -hmm. right, she managed to fill a whole bag worth of stuff. It was just absolutely yeah. mind-blowing. Mm, yeah, it, like, it's it, criminal it, how much it, stuff there is there. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, for people who've not been to Myrtle, there's like a little row of trees and then there's a fence with, when you've got your back to it where you see the aircraft. 
and between the trees and the fence it's just stacked it's disgusting how disrespectful people are and then with voucher we go fishing and that the amount of the amount of stuff left around on the banks for particularly wildlife and that it's just there's no need for it. Just uh, yeah, take it this home is something like you said, there's no need for it. I mean, you bring it in a bag, so why can't you take it home in a bag? That's that's what we do, don't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah that's, that's all you need yeah. to do, isn't it? Absolutely. You yeah. carry it there, so why can't you carry it back? It's lighter when you carry it back. <laughs> yeah, it's so, quite, yeah. It's empty, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. yeah I just don't understand it's it. It's just but, pure laziness. <laughs> it is. But, yeah, but judging by all the beer cans, obviously there's yeah. stuff goes on at night there, do you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. and there's you know, vodka bottles and all this stuff. And it's all you say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah. No, we only stream very occasionally, so it can't be us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. wine bottles. <laughs> yeah, just gonna bring this comment in here. Uh, from Martin, Martin. Langren from Airlines Hi, Live. So hello to you. Uh, he says it's the same south side at Manchester, so much rubbish. Absolutely. Yeah, in, in those bushes behind where you stand, it's um it, it, it's horrific, it really, really is. And and I just don't understand it at all. It's it's funny because when you stood there, you never actually see anybody doing it, but it happens, doesn't it? You know, yeah. and, it, and if you did see people do it, they'll, they'll either stab you or accept your um, grievance, won't they? Unfortunately. Yeah. Of course, the other thing is it's all right having the bins, but you've got to actually have the council to come and actually empty them. Otherwise, yeah. it would be... Uh, which is why we had to get the council on board as well as... We actually had the... Uh, James, I tell you, James Shine, he did a brilliant job, and he, he canvassed the whole of Myr Myrtle Avenue as well, all the residents. He really did did a brilliant job. So, uh, but obviously, we're going to do a we will do a live, or it'll be in the magazine and stuff. Obviously, when it all happens, but yeah, it, it was it was really nice to know that um, Heathrow, you know, because we just wanted to basically use some of their old bins. And they said no, no, yeah. no new bins, you know. Oh well, we'll put up a note, you know, a notice board. And they're going to have a map of the airport, apparently, and some gen. And obviously, we'll, we'll help them out with that if they need. Well, they probably don't need help now. Don't need me to help out at the their airport. But you know, we're, we're you know fully behind all that. It's, it's great because it's actually giving something back to the the local community, not just the um, the spotters and the, the photographers. It's the people that live there. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Can't be great, can it? You know, you walk down to your local park and it's like that. It's just, uh, it's just um it's it's really bad like i think what you said then about like your like a local park type thing like when i lived in felton like walking through felton park and stuff was horrific for it ponds there is even worse for it because it's just all the rubbish that goes into it uh just just turns it like completely green and it's just mucky yes. and you know yeah, whereas yeah, i yeah. used to go there as a kid and like feed the ducks and stuff with my nan and that you you couldn't do that anymore because it's just it's full of like muck and shopping trolleys from the tesco's up the road or the Lidl's, depending on how far you want to walk um and yeah it's just it's it's disgusting it's it's you know it don't take two seconds to try and find a bin to put it in so in order for them to have a bin there yeah. i think it should make a difference because you've got that alleyway as well and you know that little drive that concrete driveway that's right by the the green as you as you sort of reach the end where the turning point is to sort of you know where you yes. drive through, yeah 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 then you've yeah. got that cut through sort of yeah. concrete bit there there's a crap load of rubbish there as well so um yeah. you know it's it's yeah if it, the sooner bins get put in there i think the, the better it will be for for well. not just the residents that have got to put up with it but also spotters as well that you know would because at the end of the day, you've got to make Ross, it. There's no excuse, then, is there? And there's no excuse. You've got, two, you've got some bins there. There's no, no excuse. No, not at no. all. I, I do it's think they probably want those big green jobbies, you know, big, because <laughs> there's a, a lot of rubbish there. Eh? Yeah, rubbish. absolutely. In fairness, the end um, of um, 09 left is a, a nature reserve. Um, after nature reserve, absolutely right. spotless in there. And it, it's great for spotting. You can pick them up from Windsor if they're on Easterlies. Really good spot in there. And yeah, well, I think it's probably spotless because there's seldom anyone in there, to be honest. Yeah. But absolutely fantastic. I'd have to let you know where it is because if they're ever honestly, it's a great, great place to um mm. to film because you yeah, can pick them up from East, East, miles East, out. Are a problem to their film in Heathrow. Yeah, oh nine left, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, good, good. Yeah, no, East East is good. It, it, it's my it's my preferred method of them. Sort of that Heathrow is is on Easterlies as well because I think you get a bit more of a, a filming 
opportunities. There's, I know further down from Myrtle Avenue, if you go right the way down, depends again how far you have, are happy to walk. You've got another mound where you can get side on shots of them taking off from, from zero nine right. Uh, Can't yeah, see yeah, them yeah. take off unless they go over the little barrier that they've got there. Um, but really good for like your banking shots and stuff because you're unrestricted by the trees and everything else. So it's, it's pretty nice. There are a bit of a distance, but you know, it's pretty good for, um, for, for filming and stuff. And of course, the I don't know if it's changed um, since. I know I've done it once. The sports park. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Bedfont uh, Sports Bedford, you know, Football yeah. Ground and stuff like that. The uh, yeah, the park behind there is really good as well. Like really, really good. But you've got to be so on point with when they come out and stuff in order to make the clip a bit longer than the normal. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a very it short. Depends clip, on preference. Yeah, it depends on preference. But also, I used to play football there. I used to play football there for for Bedfont and stuff. And then just yeah. you get distracted half the time, you know, where you're trying to defend the team. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's nice, <laughs> 747 there. <laughs> oh, oh, well, so that's right? your excuse, sir. That's your excuse. You're having a bad game. Oh, I got distracted yeah. by the. Yeah. A3, yeah, thank A4. God there was no media there, you know. Like, oh, so what? Uh, so what happened with the uh, with the goal? Well, seven four seven came in. <laughs> <and, laughs> <laughs> yeah. Knew I was yeah. taking off it and everything else. But in in the summer, the, the best place if you just want to chill and watch aeroplanes, Green Man Pub. If Green Man on two, Pub. Two seven left coming in. They're right above your head. It's brilliant. You get the vortex effect. You got beer. It's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it got to be done. If not, just up the road, it's a Tesco. You can go grab four cans <laughs> and just <go> outside it. <laughs> yeah. Duke's Green, I believe it's called. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, we'll just quickly jump back on to sort of the books and stuff, because I know I've just seen a picture of uh, something that I think I flashed up earlier, but um, sort of preempted it. Uh, just we'll just yeah. Jump it up here. This is something that I believe you're currently also working on from what I can remember our, our chat. Yeah the weekend uh millennium memories the london heathrow book yeah this is a new series which basically covers um british and potentially or probably actually uh european airports as well um in the period around 95 to 2005 when obviously you had lots of interest in um aircraft flying around um the heat we got two, which, well, the first two are going to be, first one's Heathrow, second one's Manchester. Um, both are now booked in. And uh, I just see John's chat there. Yeah, oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Um, like I say, my mate John Goodale, um, he does a lot of videoing and a lot of uh, stills, photography, railways and aircraft. And, um, We've been talking about this for years and years and years. Anyway, and as I said earlier, this on this tiny, tiny little um, USB stick, there are tens of thousands of photographs. And so the first two will be Heathrow and Manchester. And they are due, we've already got them booked in. Um, so we will get them back at the end of May. I've got to write them. I've done all the picture selection. I've now just got to write. 230 captions for each book which is a bit of a pain in the backside to be honest um, busy but in that in that picture there on the cover in the background i think they're probably simple some 200s or something looks like it yeah yeah it looks like it you know and it's just going through and trying to decide what should we put in and what should we leave out it's been so hard but because <laughs> every shot you look at it you go wow look at that you know wow oh that's 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 awesome you know <laughs> yeah yeah, so we we spoke about it during the week and that, and like the first thing that stuck out to me was the the Ghanaian DC-10 because the amount of the memories I've got of watching a, a Ghanaian DC-10 take off uh, on Easterlies uh, from my house in in, in Felton was, was astonishing because they were always very very heavy. Um, so yeah, the noise that they would make was was incredible, absolutely yeah. incredible. And of course, it's such a simplistic but quite a quite a nice livery as well. It's a shame they didn't sort of. You know, last very long, really. Um, in terms of back in my sort of childhood stuff, I'd love to be able to see them now, but you know, I don't think you know, there's no such thing as well, a, a whole, Ghanaian airline in in, in in the UK. That that whole period that this sort of, the era we're covering, and basically John gave up in about two thousand and five. To be honest, because he it just got a bit too, in his words, plastic. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I get exactly mm. what he means. Do you know what I mean? And um, 
and the same thing's happened on the railways and in a way same thing's happened on the bus in the bus world but you know it's called progress and there's loads of people now that think today is brilliant but we're, we're going for the nostalgia element and also to educate the youth this is what it used to be like guys you know what i mean <laughs> this, is, this was really awesome um, yeah 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 well, no it's fantastic it's fantastic yeah. i tell you like, yeah, yeah, like this digital age now, you can that'll be sitting on YouTube or whatever for years and years. Where what you what you've done now is let people sort of into the past with with photos and that, and it's fantastic that that still yeah. sort of lives today. Like thanks to yourself, sir. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's plenty of people doing books and stuff, but like I say, you know, like with the magazine, where I just felt that something. And I would actually like to do a book about the COVID years that he throws, to be fair. Mm. Um, but I'd, I'd, I need to talk to somebody or numerous people at the airport to really get the full story. But I think it's something that needs to be um, documented. Yes, we in that first issue of the LHR magazine, we did cover, basically we did a, like a what's happened since COVID kind of feature. And all it was, it was mainly a, a a photo feature but it was all the rare stuff that was coming in and mm. blah blah but i do think you know i would like to see that whether we do it or someone else does it as a book because obviously it's completely changed covid changed the world it's completely decimated the aviation industry um and it, there needs to be a record of it somewhere if going yeah, well, how I mean? close how close can we are to being sort of back to fairly normal now from your experiences of being out and about? Uh, Heathrow, according to their last press release, are still at around about 60% of what they were. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite yeah. sure whether that's... Um, no, no, it's no, it's less than that. I think they reckon they're going to end the year... Sorry, no, no. I think it's 50%. But I think that's passenger numbers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, I think... Um, this weekend just gone they were up to about 800 flights in the day um pre-covid was 1400 so still a long way to go yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um but yeah yeah I've, I've, I've read a press release actually it was when i did the last magazine and i'm sure they were they reckon they were going to be about and it must must be passenger numbers i'm, I'm guessing but 53 percent or something which is mad they were a mm. long long way from where they were you know and yeah <clears throat> It's not good. <laughs> it's not no, good. It's, yeah. it's um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, and of course, as we were mentioning about this sort of era of, of aviation, sort of like the early two thousands and sort of maybe even slightly before that. Obviously, the variety that you would get, like with say the DC tens, you got that seven six seven in the background. You've got, of course, the infamous, uh, you know, the infamous world tails, as yeah. well. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. Which mm, of course yeah. made British Airways a little bit more. Um, well, in one of the magazines, we actually did. We actually did a. I did a feature on all the, all the different tales. And again, you think that that'd be easier to do? Oh, it took me forever trying to get all the bloody different ones. <laughs> <laughs> just, we yeah. know all about that. Yeah. We certainly do, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we did an episode on that age. Episode ten. Oh, did I you? I should have watched that and just done some screenshots. If you've yeah. got three and a half hours to spare, then do yeah. then do so because yeah. we overran big time. Yeah. <laughs> Because we didn't realize how much it was like into it, and we were like, "Oh, that you know, we'll, we'll fly through these," and we never did. And yeah, it just it went on for like three there. and a half hours. It was mental. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just. Oh. Yeah. And then trying to work out or read all the. Um, let's just put it. Oh, what's the best way of saying this nicely? Um, oh, just reading the, the descriptions of what the tales are. Should we say? Yeah, it's just like yeah. what. Yeah. <laughs> Really, you're having a laugh, mate. You know what I mean? This is nonsense. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought the backstories on some of the tales were quite um, quite nice, and you, and you, you you sort of look at them, you take them at face value, don't you? These tales, but if you actually do a little bit of research into them, actually look at some of the stories behind how they actually ended up on the plane, they're they're quite interesting, aren't they? I mean, yeah, and there's yeah. also a lot of um, bear in mind. I'm a marketeer. Uh, yeah, there's some fantastic marketing um, BS involved as well <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah classic yeah <laughs> I, well I, margaret I, thatcher let her thoughts be known didn't oh, she back in the day just, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah but she uh, would have done wouldn't she you know being well. racist and hating the north and now what, what more could you want <laughs> 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 never mind uh, um, so have you got the manchester cover 
Did I send you that? I don't think you did. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, you can send it over quickly if you like. Uh, this is me doing technology, mate. Uh, 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 or we'll try anyway. <laughs> hold, hold the line caller. <laughs> hold the line caller, yeah. Uh, this is, for copyright reasons, I should be humming the song, not playing it. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll just say, I'll, I'll jump into, there's a question here from Rob Brown, plain spot, one of our regular viewers. Um, he says, do you ever cover any military stuff when you go and do your live streams? Um, no, to be fair, um, Darren uh, Aviation in Action is the man for um, live streams of military because Daz really knows his stuff. Um, we have, I don't know if I sent you the clip, but we, we did do, we were actually going to do a live stream from Milton Hall. Um, Darren was at Lake and Heath and unfortunately that day was the day when, um, when the American pilots lost his life and Darren mm. stopped streaming and we just mm. felt, yeah, we, we ain't going to go, we ain't going live either because, you know, we're at a military base. Um, obviously Lake and Heath and Milton Hall are very close to each other. So the, the guys are all going to obviously mix they're going to know the guy that unfortunately lost his life so yeah but we we, we just did have we just filmed we didn't didn't do it live um so yeah and that's pretty much the only time we've really gone and done anything because at milton hall you can actually see over the fence of places lake and heath you need to be on top of a you know a ladder or a, a van or whatever so mm -hmm. you know it's bad enough in the blooming um <laughs> in the commercial world with fences without the um you know the, taking that through to military but yeah, i must admit we, we 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 did go up probably about four weeks before that um because darren's a friend anyway and we went just went up because he was filming we went up and met, and met him and it was absolutely awesome i must admit if you really uh Want some entertainment? Go to Lake and Heath because those mm. jets are so nice. I've, I've watched quite a few of his streams. Yeah, with the uh, F-15s taking off and what have you. It's fantastic. The noise. Now they've got the F-35s. Is it F-35? Yeah, I never saw. I think I saw the um, the episode of the F-35s coming in when they first came in. Um, yeah, and, and that's as far as I've gone with it, to be honest. But uh, but the 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 F-15s taking off are absolutely fantastic. The noise coming out of the back of them and they're just amazing. Mm -hmm. And when they land, they make this like whip, whip sound. It's really weird. It's just mm -hmm. like, what was yeah. that? You know. Yeah. yeah, sound, really, yeah. yeah. sound yeah. is absolutely awesome. And yeah, for stills, it doesn't matter because you can, you know, you just take a picture before they get below the fence line. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, lucky, I'm lucky enough to be going to um, react this year. Really, really looking forward to that. Did you get your ticket like two years ago or three years ago? And it's been about two months ago. Oh, no, really? I just bought it two months ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was I've, I've never, No, I've never, I've never been before. It's only, it's only an hour from home. I, I think there's still tickets. You'd be quick enough there. Oh, cool, yeah. Because yeah. back, back in the day, one of my many um, dodgy uh, businesses. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming out now, Ken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah them beers flowing. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, we, go. We, we, <laughs> we, we started doing these little desktop clocks, right? And I'd drive up to Manchester, and there was a warehouse right next to Strange Ways Prison, funny enough, that <laughs> imported these clocks from China. They're little, I don't know, you know, that kind of size, and they're on a little base. And I'd buy hundreds of these bloody things and then bring them home, dismantle them, take off all the little pointers, and we were printing our own designs on it. It was railways and aviation, funny enough. And then I'd take it to the die cutter. He'd, he'd cut out the perfect circle for me, and I'd stick them back on, put the clock back together, bang. I was paying, I don't know, 63p for these clocks and returned them at about eight quid. So that was all happy days. Anyway, we decided to do some air shows. <laughs> the thing with air shows is, yeah, you get a lot of people, a lot of people, um, which means your sales stand price is very expensive. And as an example, we were paying 400 quid for a stand and if I was doing a railway event, we'd be paying 25 quid. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that's a big difference, that, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes, but we've got 250,000 people coming. Yeah, yeah but only like 10,000 were actually enthusiasts. So it's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it because obviously you get into the air show early, you watch everything's going on. 
just lost a fortune. Yeah, you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I won't mention then the warranty on this clock I bought off you about 15 <laughs> years ago, will I? <laughs> <laughs> we, we once we once did right. We once did a, a two day railway show in um in London. Oh no, come on! And one of my mates said, "Oh yeah, oh, I love this clock. Yeah, it's got my favourite logo on it." Blah blah. I said, "Great, yeah." Next day, I said, "Ken, it stopped. The alarm didn't work. I'm late." <laughs> 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 oh, brilliant. That was oh, obviously wasn't the plan. We thought they were actually good product, but they weren't. As it turned out, as we found out. Oh, well. <laughs> Hey, you yeah. live and learn. <laughs> you do live and learn, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to um, check the website there, Ken. There were certainly tickets when I looked sort of five weeks ago. I managed to pick one, well, I managed to pick two up as it happens. Right, okay, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize you were taking me, Steve. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put the days off. Hey, it's a bit awkward. I'm taking in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see where it is. I'll see where you're loyal to, Zach. You'll uh, yeah. replace you next week. <laughs> Uh, no, oh, as, it, as it happens, I'm, I'm bribing Isaac into passing his GCSEs. If he fails, then the ticket's <laughs> up for grabs. Yeah. Ah, oh, right. good parenting. Yes, like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, give him away, yeah, yeah. Do a little competition <laughs> for him. If that's not incentive, I don't know what is. Exactly. <laughs> so just yeah, very no. quickly, Ken, uh, this book here, I mean, is there any sort of uh, sort of time scale that you can sort of expect this to, to be done? Or is it literally a slow project that you'll do? At your no, own no, time? it's... Um... Basically, what happened just before Christmas, we changed our printers um, due to escalating costs all over the place. And we've actually bizarrely found a really good printer um, at a much cheaper price. But they are in the Czech Republic. <laughs> so um, we've gone from a, a two to three week turnaround to an eight week turnaround, eight to nine weeks. Um, these two books, the Heathrow and the Manchester, are both now booked in. <laughs> which means um, I have to get them finished within about three weeks. The pictures are done. It's just now writing it. So we should be okay. And we will get them, uh, I think it's the last week of May, they'll, they'll pitch up, is what we're expecting. Mm. The A380 book should be out for the 10th of April. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> It's, it's really getting there. I mean, I'm quite pleased with it. And again, this is a project that started in back in the 2018. I came mm. up with the idea in the Heathrow Guide and and this. You know what I mean? And it was just like, uh, you know, we finally got there. <laughs> <laughs> How many books do you think you've you've yes. um, helped write and what have you over years? You've obviously uh, done a lot, haven't you? We've done. I think we've just hit the hundred. In terms, okay, no, right. not, not me personally, but you know, no. visions we publish a hundred. So, yeah. kind of, um, but my dad keeps our archive because if they're here, I'll end up selling them. You know what I mean? Especially the ones that sold out. You know, I'll on. So, dad keeps the archive. And I was over there a few months back and I was just doing a quick count up on the bookshelf. And I yeah. think we're around about the hundred mark on wow. books. And we did, mm. or we've done about 130 DVDs, wow, um, buses and railways. And then yeah. you've got all the other stuff with you, like calendars and uh, magazines. Like, our, our bus magazine's up to issue 55 now. Wow. 54. Yeah. The Heathrow magazine's on issue 8. You know what I mean? It's, so it's, it's getting there. It's yeah, amazing. absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah is, is there a massive market for the uh, for the bus one? No. No. This does, one does it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, I was going to say, is it because it's a London bus type um, edition? So is it just mainly obviously people who live in London around that area? I would imagine. No, is it no, not? Bizar bizarrely not. <clears throat> We've got a Franken machine, and as you put them through, one day I was just thought I'm going to do like in my head, just do a little tally on sort of like London home counties and rest rest of the UK or rest yeah. of Britain, rest of the world. Um, I was going through, it and it's like 50 50. There's only okay, about 50 right. people that buy. The London Mass magazine that are within thirty miles of London. Right, right, right. We've got people all over, got people all over the world. To be it. fair, it is. yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, they're iconic popular, kind of London like... buses. Hong Kong. Hmm? Oh, yeah, all over Hong wow. Kong, America, Australia. Wow, loads of places in Europe. No, yeah, mad. I was going to say. Yeah. To be fair, probably two or three hundred people who follow me on Instagram are um, a bus spotters. I, I was quite surprised how how big it is to be honest but i tell you what 
fascinated me the other week. Well, not the other week because it's been well, a few months back. Well, actually, it's probably last summer. We were doing a live stream um, somewhere, and it must have been an afternoon one. Well, it would be an afternoon one because probably had a hangover. So yeah, it was the afternoon, and all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, we got like loads of people from Brazil watching. Oh really? All right. Yeah, it was just like really mad. Were you on about Biden? No, it wasn't Biden. It was um, it was just a normal stream. Just all of a sudden, all these people from Brazil started watching, and I presume with somebody had copied, uh, you know, uh, shared it with their mates and stuff. But yeah, it's mm. just like, and that's what I kind of like about the aviation thing. It is actually a worldwide thing. On this, you know, when you do your live streams, you get people from just literally all over the blooming place. Yeah, and um, yeah. it's it's quite nice that it sort of brings everybody together, and you know. I've started watching those guys in Sydney, the Sid, I think called Sid Squad, when the timing oh, okay. works. And that's yeah. quite interesting, just seeing someone different. Yeah. And what I've noticed in the last, literally last six months, um, streaming in America, all of a sudden it's just gone through the roof. You've got mm, yeah. Kevin at LAX, whatever he's called, the other guys at LA. Yeah, I've watched some of them, yeah. It's all over, aren't they? Mm, and, yeah, airline videos, is it? Yeah, oh yeah, 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 that's the one. Very yeah. good streaming. Very, yeah. very good. And it's yeah. really quite interesting how all of a sudden, and they, they are way behind the curve in America. Yeah, it's a sign. You know, you've got other people going out there doing stuff, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they've kind of clicked onto this. And you think, kind of, this is kind of the area they should be really like leading. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Considering they've got like a, a ton of airports over there, probably yeah. more to so them. Now they've done it, they are going yeah. massive very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah, no, you see, you see quite a few of the UK-based ones now, don't you? Going out to America and Canada, and what, obviously yeah. Uh, yeah. spotted the niche to to go and grow yeah. their their channels and whatever. But, so, like, good luck to them. Yeah, I think uh, if Martin's still in chat, I think he's starting to do one from Vancouver, isn't he? Yeah, they've got. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah they've yeah, got a guy in Vancouver. Yeah. He's going to do do the streams, which is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've sent the backdrops from his uh, advert for it, and it, it, it looks fantastic. Place. Vancouver Airport's backdrop. Yeah, the backdrops, it's gorgeous. It really, really so is. Good. Yeah. It's so, yeah. so good. It's so, so good. Yeah. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming in Vancouver, you don't get any fences in the way. <laughs> Judge by yeah. the pictures. It's like, go, 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 to Amsterdam, go to Frankfurt, go to Zurich. It's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's just, just UK, yeah. isn't it? That is yeah. the problem. Skipper yeah. was a good yeah. shout. Yeah, Skipper was a good shout. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Over here, though. Oh, yeah. Guys, can, can I just give a big shout out? I know we do shouts out, but just do a shout out for the Corridon Hotel um, at Skipper. You've got a 747 in the garden. What more do you want? <laughs> and they have, they have a sky bar, right? And it's only accessible by a special lift. We actually did a stream from there, um, and it's on our YouTube channel. And you'll notice that it's obviously a bar because as we go through the stream, we might have been drinking. That's what I'm going to say. Um, but anyway, you get, get in the special lift, and it <laughs> again, again, it's, it's either on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, and it's um, like taking off on an aeroplane to get up to this sky bar. But wow. Corridon, honestly, is well worth the stay. You'll love it because you've got this sky bar that just looks over Skipple. Wow. So you don't have oh, beers, yeah. and down below you've got a 747. It's just fantastic. Yeah, Amazing. sounds great. That. Something like that in London. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Really Worth getting to, I think. Mm. <clears throat> but um, we'll yeah. be going back soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We see. Um, <clears throat> go on, Steve. I was, was going to say, I see my my brother popped up and said you, you get the um, print off for the Brighton and Hove buses on a, a spreadsheet in there. And every time I've been there, they're named after famous people and that. And I've always thought you'd be really upset if. A celebrity you didn't particularly like was the bus that ran you over one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's, there's one thing. If anybody wants to stream from the um, Sky Bar, uh, you will end because they have music playing. You get copyright um, warnings from YouTube and Facebook, like on a daily basis. And this has been going on now since well two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Nothing so you can do about it. Turn it off for about an hour and a half. Yeah, really <laughs> <laughs> of, all the, um, of all the places you've been there, Ken, what's your favourite of the, the film at and that? Oh, God. Um, 
Manchester South side, South side is pretty epic because mm -hmm. it's in Resident and you've actually got a really decent view. Um, I reckon probably the Polar Barn's pretty good as well. I think uh, Skip Hole. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, it is on my list to do. Oh, well, actually, funny enough, prior to COVID, we were planning a trip out to um, Skip Hole with our mods and stuff and everything and friends. And the idea was we were going to try and get... Um, We'd get some transport laid on so everybody everybody could get moved around and stuff, yeah. And we'll probably do that maybe later this year again. And it, because you need a car to get around, there's so many great locations at Amsterdam, mm -hmm. but the Polder Barn is brutal. But there's mm -hmm. also some other really great places, do you know what I mean? And but you need a car, it's a big airport, yeah, yeah. So as you probably okay. appreciate and, but yeah so we're, we're going to try and put on some kind of not not necessarily an organized trip but basically anybody wants to come we'll make sure we've got some cars and people to get you around or a mini bus da, 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 and obviously we'll stay at the corridor <laughs> why not <laughs> why not i imagine details of that will go up on like websites and social yeah media yeah yeah that sort of... yeah it's just a question of like kind of getting the timing right really because i think covid is probably going to come back in some form and cause loads of chaos so you've got to be kind of yeah but it would be a good trip because there are so many locations and there's so much traffic there well there was i don't really know what it's like now mm. apart from the few screens i've seen but Dan daniel saying frankfurt <laughs> oh yes and daniel yeah frankfurt yeah yeah, yeah. We, we, we we went to frankfurt because of I mean, Daniel and Spotting TV, they had a meetup and it was <coughs> January, right? And it was foggy, as I mentioned earlier. I was like, ah. um, so, yeah, again, that's another place we need to go to uh, in the summer. And I think everyone needs to go there. Because, again, as long as you've got transport, there are so many great locations around the airport. If you're a photographer or even a videographer, you can get so much stuff. It's brilliant. It really is brilliant. Amazing. But yeah, yeah. Some good, there's some good. good spots in Europe, I think. There's some good spots, including, like you say, like the Frankfurt's and um, like Zurich. Zurich apparently well, has a really, really good, good platform, don't they? Yeah, they've got a, a platform there. Um, so, yeah, some, some really good, <clears throat> really good uh, options. Um, you already got one person that will happily tag along, that'll be Jack Rolls. Just don't put them in there anywhere near any APUs, and you'll be absolutely uh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you the story last yeah. week. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 we'll give him a bag of mini egg. Yeah, we'll mention that more later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll <mention> more later. <clears throat> but, uh, but yes, so as much as we'd love to sit here and chat all night, we do have to wrap up eventually. Um, so we're going to sort of begin to do that. But firstly, I want to say thank you, Ken, uh, for coming on to the show. We'll probably Absolutely, uh, at yeah, some point, yeah, there's so brilliant. much more. There'll be so much more to talk about in at least two, three months because there'll be so much that's happened for yourself, including like the books and that. So, um, just very quickly, like just if you want to sort of just put the books out there and try and drum up some interest, uh, give it give it a good mention. Yeah, basically, just go to our website, um, visionsinternational.biz. Uh, the three eighty books on there. Oh, also, what we do do. Hang on. Uh, Not clocks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, our coins. Uh, this is the first one, which is Landor, which we were talking about earlier. Um, they're on the website. We've, we've got three more coming, which is the other three uh, retro deliveries. So, yeah, have, have a look on the website. But please, yeah, go, go go on the website and see what we're doing. The two books, the, the yet or the first of the two airport books aren't on the website yet, but they will be soonish. Um, yeah you know and the magazine obviously please you can do a subscription on the magazine i think it's 25.95 for six issues gets delivered to your door if you don't want to do that but you're near heathrow or manchester you can get it from the shops there you know we just appreciate the support guys and obviously on youtube on visions international youtube channel and our facebook visions in uh, visions aviation live we do do some live streams every now and again um they haven't been that frequent to be fair because we're too busy doing the books <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but to be honest 
<laughs> to be fair, we might be. Was it Sunday that that? Um, Somewhat, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Think, we might be yeah. stand on Sunday. So just go onto those pages, just like it, whatever you do, and subscribe and get the notifications because you might get some really interesting action on Sunday. Fantastic. Well, well said. Yeah, um, mm. yeah. So uh, we'll we'll start to wrap the show up now. It's been a lot of fun uh, streaming to. Uh, not just our own YouTube channel, but your YouTube channel and your uh, page as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, appreciate that massively. And maybe we'll be here for the long term. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll begin to wrap the show up. So uh, for anybody that hasn't seen this before, this is the part of the show where we kind of tend to lay back. We take our foot off the pedal and we uh, sort of begin to do some shout outs to people, friends, family, loved ones, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And what we tend to do is throw the guest under the bus uh, with the first lot. So, Ken, we're going to put you on the spot. Is uh, it Brighton, boss? I've got a massive head. As long as it's not named after yeah. somebody you don't like. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Ken, if you'd like to uh, give some shout-outs to... Uh, okay, first of all, shout-outs. As shout many out. as you like, as many people good. as you like. Uh, this will keep going to about midnight, so that's all good. Um, <laughs> <I'll get laughs> Thank you, first and foremost, everybody that's watching. Um, there's some lovely comments seeing going through you know love you all guys brilliant um there's lots the first person i really want to say a mega 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 thanks to because visions wouldn't happen without her is sarah my partner uh she pretty much has to part with me and deal with all the orders so anybody orders was <laughs> sarah does it so mm. massive shout out to sarah um on the magazine got people like Matteo, um tony best neil martin uh, Glenn, just loads of people that write and supply stuff. Love, love you all. Uh, mega, mega mention to John Goodale, who I mentioned already because of the, the pictures, and we've now got a great series of books coming. Charles Kennedy for helping me for 380. Sam Jennings, uh, Ender Burke, who was in earlier. Just yeah, so many people. If I missed, well, I've missed obviously loads of people, but I'm funny at the end of the my. Uh, list aviation shop at manchester airport ard at heathrow and the green man and three magpies because they really are supporting us in this aviation journey so that's about it really <laughs> so there is, <laughs> there is that's more. all right we, that's why i'd be saying you know oh, oh, okay. there's, there's no oh, no, oh, oh hang on also my the moderators my moderating team on our live streams is donna loops uh shirley Jules. Jules, obviously Sarah, and probably more. Because whenever we're doing a YouTube live stream, I seem to have loads of these people with the spanners on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so to all our mods as well, brilliant. If I Fantastic. forgot them, but I do apologise. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of people in here that sort of uh, put some nice comments in there, so I'll just quickly read those up before we do ours. Um, First one from uh, Darren Graham Photography says, first time in the Departure Lounge, definitely be coming back. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I appreciate that massively. Yeah, definitely. Um, Jim Gemmel uh, says, excellent chat tonight, Ken, and and you in the background, Sarah. Keep <laughs> up the great work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sarah, come in. Yeah. Sarah, come in. Come in. Say hello. Yeah, come on, Sarah. You can't hide forever. Yeah, yeah. Come on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> The woman there we go. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, just a couple of random questions at the moment. Darren Graham again says to Ken, gravy with your Sunday dinner or without? Without, you know that. All, all of my friends know I despise gravy because I, I believe oh. that. No, 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 sorry, if you cook your meat right. This is simple. If you cook your meat right, you don't need gravy. Very good. Well, well yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong. Well, we've with all that. got an opinion on gravy, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for another. What, 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 yeah. what you like with um, chutneys and preserves? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> well, that's just answered wrong. No. That's it. That's correct that's answer. Uh, question answered. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's a story I, behind that, but we'll. Be we'll fair, I don't mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind a red wine juice. Oh, search that one up and tell us all about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. actually, no, yeah. don't do that because we'll be having too much fun and we'll get told off. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite partial to a mango chutney with my pompadoms, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel Watts says, Shout out to Sarah. So, Sarah's getting a lot of love at the moment. I know she's been getting a lot of love through the, the chat as well. So, 
uh good good stuff on that one um uh loopy with probably the comment of the night i am a spanner <laughs> yeah, yeah, Luke, <laughs> yeah. Luke's one of our spanners yeah <laughs> i'm a spanner yeah you're a spanner as well so yeah yeah Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Carl, uh, Carl Shield says greetings from Dublin. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Jack Rolls with the last one in there. Uh, shout out to all you guys. You're all amazing. So wonderful. We'll take that. Yeah. Um, but it's, okay, we'll, we'll chuck that in there as well. No past names, they are fakers, masquerading. I would call them anemic favorite. carrots, personally, but yeah. Well, yeah. I like a nice past nip, so I'm, I'm not a fan. Yeah. I'm, I'm to be fair, in 38, in 38 years, I've only ever cooked for my brother once, and uh, if, if that ever happens again, I'll make sure there's past nips in there just to uh, <laughs> mess them up. <laughs> If you mash him up, I'm sure he won't notice the difference. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. Somebody else yeah. with a sunset. Yeah, that's it. Put him in his beaker. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All uh, right, let's let's crack on with some more shout outs and then we'll begin to wrap the show up. So, Steve, if you'd like to jump into yours. Any time today, Steve. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. First of all, um, Ken and Sarah. Is he del he's massively delayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm clearly, I'm clearly lagging. I'm clearly lagging here. You'll have to stay with it. So yeah, Ken and Sarah, thank you for coming along. It's been a real privilege to to hear what you've got to say. And everyone in the chat, there's been some real uh, sort of familiar names and some some big names in the industry. So it, it's a it's amazing that you've um, joined us, and we really appreciate it. And hopefully, you'll be back to watch to watch our shows and obviously to keep supporting in Ken and, and Sarah and their work. Um Tom and Ian as ever, it's always it's always fun and it's always great to be part of it. And like I say, j just everyone in the chat tonight is fantastic and it, it's been a great show. So thank you all very much. Give it a couple of seconds just to let the lag phase out. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Ian, uh your your go. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, just reiterate really what Steve just said, and uh, thanks to you, Ken and Sarah, sat in background. It's uh, it, it, it's been a really, really nice insight. And I mean, I've only ever watched you when you've been doing your streams on. Uh, I think Manchester were your last one you did, weren't it? And I watched that one, and to actually be able to speak to the people behind it, and 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 you know, listen to people's backgrounds and stuff like that. That it's uh, you know, you, with the trains and the buses and this, that, and the other, and and, and the history behind everything, what you do, it's been really, really interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a really, really good show. So, a massive thanks to you, Ken and, and Sarah. Um, obviously, you and you and Steve as well, Tom, um, and everybody in chat tonight. There's been a lot of names in there, but um, I've, I've seen it past to be quite honest on various yeah. bits and pieces, and uh, it's been quite interesting. Yeah, just to see there is what I've popped up and. Um, to read some of the comments out so fantastic so thanks to everyone for joining in tonight it's been great yeah, can, can, you, mm -hmm. Tom, can uh, i just say can i just say to like obviously we've got a lot of guys that we know in this now um yeah please sign up for um the departure lounge because it's every, every week isn't it mate every, every, every wednesday week. yes like last mm -hmm. week was really good fun because you got to vote on different um retro liveries and it's really quite quite funny when you vote completely different to these three. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun. It is good fun. Yeah, yeah we've got the second part of that coming possible. up soon, haven't we? Oh, excellent! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we try and make it as light hard as possible. You know, it's no yeah. point trying to take everything seriously in life. So everyone needs a little bit of an outlet on a Wednesday. Yeah, evening. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is the, yeah. sort of the, the thing that we do. So it mm. seems to go down quite well. And yeah, everyone enjoyed the retros last week. So yeah it was good it was good stuff yeah but, uh, no appreciate that if you haven't subscribed already please do it'll help us out massively and it'd be massively appreciated um and uh yeah um are you you finished with yours yeah, yeah i'm done yeah thanks very much wonderful yeah. i'll quickly yeah. shout mine out and then we'll go so um also very quickly uh that's the wrong one. I'll ask it anyway. It's the wrong one i clicked on uh <laughs> darren smith says if you have to choose one uh bus plane or train depends where you're going yeah, yeah. If, if you're going down to down to town, you don't really want to be taking a plane, do you? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, no, I've, I've, got, I've got to be honest. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm a train geek first, but then aviation. Yeah, 
trains has been part of my life for years and years and years. And years. So yeah. Mm. Did you tell me about your model railway? Oh no, I didn't tell you about my model railway. But we didn't do that next time. Do it next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll dedicate an entire show to it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's a massive model. It's brilliant. It really. <laughs> Wonderful. All uh, right, I'll jump into some of mine, and then we'll get going. So, uh, big thank you to Ken for, uh, well, Ken and Sarah for uh, dedicating the evening to us this evening. It's been a lot of fun, um, and as always, there's always so much to cover, not enough time to do it. So, no doubt, we'll get you back on um, again at some stage. Um, so, yeah, it's a big thank you to you two. Uh, a big thank you to uh, Steve and Ian uh, for uh, contributing as per normal now on episode number fifty-three. Um, a big shout out to everybody watching. As Ian said, there are some names in there that are very, very familiar. Mm. Um, so thank you to those that have watched as well. Um, and of course, names that we haven't seen before. So absolutely, yeah. Mm. So if it's your first time yeah, watching, brilliant. thank you very much. Um, and uh, and yeah, everybody that's subscribed and you know contributes to the channel, fan, you know, you, you're all fantastic. Um, and of course, lastly. Um, as we always do here, um, frontline workers, health workers across the world, not just in this country, um, <clears throat> for the uh, amazing effort that everyone's putting in during this difficult time, which seems to be now getting a bit more difficult. So, um, yeah, so a big shout out to uh, all the sort of key workers um, around the world. So uh, seeing as it was mentioned and everybody enjoyed it and we actually didn't get through the entire list that we had, next Wednesday we are doing part two of Rate the Retros. Um, so, <laughs> I'm glad you're excited about it. <laughs> We're about to fall out at some stage. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've got part two. There's still quite a few we didn't get through, including some big hitters to the likes of, in fact, we won't mention them. But we'll just wait to, uh, to reveal them. But we're looking forward to doing a part two because it's good fun. So we're going to vote on them, and you guys will vote on them. And um, yeah, it'll be it'll be an evening of, of, of wonderful fun and laughter and everything else. So yeah, definitely definitely tune into that next Wednesday, seven thirty p.m. on the YouTube channel and on uh, Visions International. Ken, I believe. You're sorry. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from Malta. Away. I think he's really oh. forbidden. He? <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, oh, just so read, I've read these comments down the slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the, uh, yeah, uh, so the uh, part part two of the rate, rate the retros uh, on our YouTube channel, and of course we'll broadcast it on to your uh, channels as well. If, you're if happy you want to, that. you can do absolutely no problem. excellent stuff. Uh, Jack Rolls jumping in there saying, as long as there's APUs, I'm <laughs> happy. <laughs> <laughs> Not Dirty saying anything boy. about that. Uh, and just one here from Darren Graham says, I tried clicking your link to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. They seem to not be working. I will sort that out uh, very, very soon. Um, maybe once the stream is done, I'll get that link sorted properly. So <clears throat> next week, as we mentioned, Rate the Retro is part two. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, until then, you can follow us as we've been putting out on uh, the show this evening. You can find us on it on Twitter uh, if you want to search us up that way. I will sort the links out in the description. Um, if you rather do it that way, uh, you can also find us on Facebook. Um, so you can um, keep up to date with that. Not posting regularly on there, but if you're fancy following it, go for it. Uh, and of course, Instagram, where we post photos on a daily basis. Steve and Ian both have their own personal Instagrams. If you wish to give them a follow as well, well worth doing. Um, as they both post some wonderful pictures. Uh, and Ian's Instagram is there. Thank you. Wonderful. So all that's left to say is, um, yeah, leave a like on the stream if you're watching on YouTube. Um, if you're watching on Visions Aviation Live, uh, do leave a leave like a on the stream as well. <laughs> uh, to make sure I got that right then. <laughs> uh, do leave a like on the stream on, on Facebook as well. Uh, support uh, Visions Aviation as well. Um, and, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to say our goodbyes. So uh, we're going to go with... Ian, you first tonight, if you'd like to say your goodbyes to the people. Watching. Yeah, just, yeah, thanks. Thanks again to um, everyone who's been in the chat tonight. Uh, thanks to Ken and Sarah again and to you two guys. And uh, we'll see you all next week for these for the retros. Wonderful. Off he goes. Um, we'll go Steve. Yep. Yeah, all right. Shameless plug. Give me a follow on uh, Steve <laughs> underscore planes on uh, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yep. Yeah, um, again, Ken, 
Yeah. Ken, absolute privilege to have you on tonight. Fascinating, really interesting, and good luck with everything going forward and that. And uh, yeah, I, I will set you up for the the trademark goodbye. Um, Here we go. All right, cheerio, my lovelies. Take care. <laughs> stay safe. Stay sexy. And until next time, look after yourselves. Cheerio now. Oh, it gets better every week. Wonderful. Uh, right, Ken, if you'd like to say goodbye to, yeah. of course, your, your adoring fans and uh, everybody <laughs> watching. No, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And more importantly, thank you, Tom and you guys. It, it's been an absolute pleasure, honestly. I love the format of this, and I hope you open strength to strength. You can put it onto our, as we as we now we know we can do that. You can put it onto our thing every week. All good. Um, Wonderful. So, yeah. Just, yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, just real. Wonderful. And we'll see you soon, no doubt, on the live stream. I hope so. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to sit and drink beers. Is good. <laughs> Not me, I'm afraid. I don't have any. No, <laughs> we'll, 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 see, yeah. we'll see you around. We'll see you around, Ken. Thank you so much again. Yeah. Uh, and all that's left to say for myself is a big thank you to everybody who's watched. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll be joining us next week for Rate of the Retros Part 2. Um, so uh, have an enjoyable rest of the week. Um, have a fantastic weekend. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. UK time for episode 54. Enjoy yourselves, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>